I'll say this before this person speaks. The P, the quality of guests on this show. Sometimes, sometimes you think you're at the bus station when you say it's like, is this, is this the best show uh-huh. guest list or uh-huh. is this uh-huh. the people you? Is there, was this a sign in sheet at the bus station? Uh-huh. And it's like, but now when I hear a guest like this on the line, now this this is a this uh-huh. is a, a capital S star. <laughs> Who is this now? Who's on the line? The one and only Joe Para of Joe Para Talks With You on Adult Swim. Oh, my good. Now, this guy. Joe, how are you? Good. Thanks for having me, Tom. And happy birthday, AP Mike. Isn't that the nicest thing? Happy birthday, AP. This is what makes this guy a class act, and it makes his show so kind. And f- But this thing, I hear these people... And I'm not going to name names because this is not the kind of thing I do. But there are other shows. Maybe they're about football coaches that become soccer coaches in different countries. And I'm not going to name names, though. Not naming names. And look, maybe those shows are nice and they're pleasant. But do they bring the larfs? No, it's like eating a bowl of mashed potatoes. Do you laugh when you eat mashed potatoes? No, you don't. You feel good. You feel co- cozy and comfy. That has a place. But this show, Joe Para, what's it called now? Joe Para talks with you. Joe Para talks with you. Mm-hmm. This show is such a it's such a sweet show, but it's also super funny. They bring the laughs on this show. It's the sweet spot. I appreciate that. Yeah, we try and make sure that, um, yeah, this is is pretty goofy at times. And, uh, yeah, I think it may have even got a little bit sillier this year just because it's kind of, I've been wanting to watch, like, kind of uh, more uh, traditional kind of broad comedy stuff. Like, uh, I watched, like, Ace Ventura a a lot during the pandemic and uh, just wanted to. Can I ask you a question, Joe? I never been through anything like this in my life. <laughs> Get bounced off a of Zoom. I got a, a, a top shelf guest on the show. Finally. Well, that's what, then, you threw shade at an Apple TV show. That's what happens. They got all the viruses over there. That is what I think. I think I did just, I think I just got uh, lassoed. Yeah. <laughs> they, they lassoed my internet stream. Yeah. Not that I'm naming names out. And look, <laughs> if people like that show, God bless them. It's a good time. It's a fun thing. It's fun. I like. I like it nice. Uh, who doesn't like uh, getting wrapped, taking a shower, and then you wrap yourself under the covers and you feel all snuggly, and you kind of dry off under the. Co- Everybody likes things like that. You like you driving the car with the air conditioning on. You roll the window down. You get a little bit. Things like that. That's what that show is. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, yeah. But I like the laughs, and this is the thing. This Joe Parra show is funny. And I said to you, you watched Ace Ventura a bunch of times. What happened? Were you, <laughs> did you spend the pandemic trapped in an abandoned West Coast video? Pretty much, yeah. I just, uh, every day before we shot this year, I watched. I woke up at uh, 4.30 a.m., drank three cups of coffee, uh, okay. uh, watched Ace Ventura start to finish, and then... Uh, put on my Hawaiian shirt and they just kind of rolled camera while I walked around on set and said, uh, <laughs> yeah, how would Jim Carrey say this? And then and Marty, the scouts, the director would go bigger, bigger, bigger. And then I would just uh, keep doing that over again. And I would say smoking over and over. And then <laughs> that's good. And, <laughs> So, yeah, each episode is a 12 hours long. We didn't even bother to edit it. Yeah, why would why would you edit it? It's now like Curb Your Enthusiasm, where apparently they just make a movie every week now. Do they really? It's like the the first episode, so it was 45 minutes long. I was like, yeah. but then it's weirdly, I'm just kind of like, yeah, I kind of don't mind this. It's sloppy. It's poorly made. It's like, but it's like, they're all like, on fumes, but I'm kind of just like, man, I think this is more appealing in a weird way to watch them be like, just there. It seems like they're having fun. Interesting. I mean, it does. Yeah. 
I'm going to, I don't know. I think I might wait till the holidays to watch that with my dad because that's one of the shows we both enjoy uh, yeah. watching. Well, you, you uh, better block off about four days, you and your dad, because <laughs> hey, these cuts are not coming in tight. <laughs> they are not tight. You and dad better have some plenty of free time. I so, hope, yeah, it's good. And it's, I'd rather watch him with him because one of his pastimes, he loves describing the episodes that I haven't seen. So okay. We can kind of avoid that if I watch them with him and, you know. Yeah, so. you can get past that uncomfortable having to have your dad explain what Larry said to <laughs> Susie. Pickle problems are driving me nuts. Joe, <laughs> Joe, what is it? What is what's going on? I got tech problems. Are they on I Apple? Got, are the Beatles on Apple? They, they are on Apple. Look, it's all coming. The the chickens are coming home to roost. I shot my mouth off like a big shot, and I'm getting getting punished. Now, Joe, season three of your show, Joe Para talks with you. When does this start? When? Well, it's it's so far away before we can see this, right? No, no. This Sunday night at uh, 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 November seventh at twelve thirty p.m. or a.m. I guess Sunday night into Monday morning. Uh, so yeah, it's very soon. And, oh wow, that's uh, season. That's that, a season three. Because look, season one was amazing. Yeah. Season two was even better. Hey, season three. Are you proud of season three? Very. I. Uh, our crew is incredible to to help us pull this off during the, the last year, but I feel very lucky and like, uh, I don't know. I think it's really exciting. We got a bunch of more characters. There's a lot of, uh, subject matter about chairs and sitting. And, uh, yeah, I think it's really funny. Connor is back and Joe Firestone is back and, you know, the same exact writers as season two. So it, and I think we're just, I don't know. I I kind of felt a, a kind of like a I don't know if you had this in the last year, but just kind of like a, a doubt whether you know comedy is like a frivolous thing, and uh, you know what's the point of doing anything or a TV show? And I think that just we put all that uh, kind of guilt into making it even better and trying to justify a uh, shoot during. Uh, the, 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 the pandemic. So I think it yeah. came out pretty funny and, uh, yeah, I'm very proud of it. There's some fun stuff that I, this, we haven't done before. We did a episode mostly from a drone and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think, I think you'll like it. I hope so. I can't wait. Now you said that, uh, let's face this. A scream? Are they going to always screaming at everybody? What's his name again? Marty Scalzo, the director. No, no, the one on camera. The, 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 the screamer. The screamer. George W. Bush and what's his name again? Connor O'Malley. Connor O'Malley. That's right. Yeah. He's always yeah. like. I hate politics. And I hate minions. <laughs> Did you see his latest one about the the Irish mob and how he's trying to get the Irish mob started again? I saw a thing. I didn't get to watch it yet. I I wanted to just. Uh, I I my mom really doesn't like when when I watch his videos. Um, so it's a little tricky. I kind of have to wait till she goes to bed, but, um, he's always, always like, what's this guy yelling about? He's always mad, mad at, oh, Trump, ah, minions. Oh, I can't stand sliced meat. Oh, look at this dumb, look at this dumb display in a store. Oh, I'm so mad. That's a pretty good impression, actually. And those are his <laughs> favorite subject matters. He's like, is he is he Gen Z's Lewis Black? <laughs> I know. I didn't I didn't think of it that way, but I don't know. 
Well, he's always bringing the heat. Chicago. I yeah, I uh, yeah. I think this latest video is a more simmering anger. Okay, uh, but. And it's, I don't know, it's kind of him getting back to his roots. And you know how they say that inside every joke is a uh, truth. I think that he yeah. really does want the Irish mob to come back so that he could... Uh, uh, run it. I don't know. Run it, yeah. I think that, yeah. I don't He'll know. be trying to shoot season four of your show. He'll show up. He'll just be like, oh, it's a nice, uh, nice camera package you got there. Be a shame if something happened to it. <laughs> You'll be like, wait, you're on the show. Why would you want? Why would you want to damage the cameras that film you? <laughs> well, I don't know. As a he's a producer on the show, so he knows we have an insurance policy. So uh, I don't know. We'll just have to have somebody follow him around and make sure that none of his guys drive the equipment truck away. Yeah, some of his crew. Make sure Connor's crew isn't uh, that there's eyes on him, right? Right. Yeah. But uh, no, he's a uh, uh, yeah. No, I'm excited about. I yeah. His videos keep on getting better and better. Though, did you see the the one where he goes into the internet? I forget the name of that one. Oh yeah. Was, no. Like, Look, he's one of my I'm I'm only teasing with Connor. He's one of my favorite people as a person and a comedian. I think he's as funny as it gets and he's a nice guy too. I only give him the business cuz like Don Rickles said, I only make fun of big people. I don't make fun of the little guy. I only make fun of big people and tonight each and every one of you are big big people. Thank you and God bless America. <laughs> That's how Don Rickles would end every show. That's great. That's, uh, and, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Yeah, that's nice. You should, so what, what, what have been some of the reactions to you becoming recognized and seeing, oh, that's the guy, that's Joe Perra from, from the show? What, what, what has that experience been like for you, Joe? It, it really doesn't happen that much. It's been nice that people have been coming to me and Dan Licata's weekly show more. Uh, but it's really, you know, it's New York. Nobody, everybody's got something to go. They don't go somewhere to go. They're not worried about a guy on a dull swim. So it's been pretty. I'm not saying they're worried about you. It's not like they're just like, <laughs> you're making it sound like, you're making it sound like they're, they're not sure what to do when they see you. <laughs> that there's a potential threat. I mean, just, no. these are nice experiences. Oh, yeah, no, people, it's been nice to hear that people found the show during the last year and a half, and, like, when they say it helped them yeah, feel better, it was, uh, it was nice to hear, and I, I don't know, but, yeah, I don't, I really, I don't think that much has changed for me. I came home from tonight, they had a glass of wine at dinner, now I'm having a glass of water, and then I'm going to go to bed, and uh, that's a, what my life was like before, uh, since I was 10, I would do that. So Wait, uh, before you were 10, you were knocking back a glass of wine with dinner? After I finished my homework, my parents would let me have a glass of Chianti, and then I would drink a glass of water, and then I would uh, go go to sleep. And as long as you're uh, staying hydrated, though, that's what that's what really matters. Here. Yeah, my parents, a, they didn't want me to have a hangover for fifth grade. <laughs> yeah, they just didn't want, why is my fifth-year-old, he's all, he got the, he got the liquor sweats at school, and he's like, <laughs> oh, I don't feel so good. Joe grew up very French. Yes, yeah. I guess you grew up very European in the, yeah, in the para I, household. Yeah, they would give me, they would give me a, a, a a, a pure lunch bag with a baguette, fresh butter, and some bonbons for dessert. And that was my lunch. <laughs> and a little. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. I was. Sister, t- t- wouldn't it be great if Connor O'Malley was on an episode of Curb, except for Larry David didn't know what was going to happen? Oh, that'd be, my, that'd be amazing. I'd start watching the show again. Yeah, Pat's boycotting Curb. How come? 
you know, I just can't, I can't take all the yelling right now, Joe. I just, we just, we just, we're trying to get out of this pandemic. We're almost there. I can't do the yelling. It stresses me out. I am kind of curious how uh, Larry David is dealing with the pandemic. Did he take the subject matter head on or what does he yeah, complain about this time? I mean, I thought he would go head first into being germaphobic, hypochondriac, and like, you know, judging people for not wearing masks, you know. At this point, yeah. and then like I start watching the show, and it's the complete opposite. He's not wearing a mask anywhere. He's not bringing it up, and I'm just like, this is this the same guy from all they, those? But they brought it up. They brought it up when they caught they busted Albert Brooks was hoarding. Uh, that was hand sanitizer. That was small potatoes. I, I. But what do you want it to be? Everybody behind a mask? No, I think he is. A, I think <laughs> the character of Larry David would still be wearing a mask at this point of the pandemic. We've learned for twelve some odd seasons that he's a he's a Pat, germaphobe. Pat, Pat, it would sound like this. What? What's going on? I'd watch it. That's funny. Yes, yes. What's going on? It's too too good. And then, Larry, you moron! You're so stupid, Larry! You gotta go. Hey, Susie, you gotta go eat, Larry. What are we doing? Hey, Larry, Larry, fuck hey, <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> oh, I forgot he died. Oh, my God. I truly forgot that when I did yeah. that. I was not. The late, great Funkhauser. Yeah. This is a, this well, is I'll say this, Joe Para. Your show okay. is just straight up good old fashioned entertainment. It's funny. It's got heart. Joe Parra talks with you, not to you, not at you, with you. That's very we made, telling. We, made, we had the conversation and we wanted to make it with you because uh, we want to encourage uh, people to talk at the TV for the 11 minutes straight. Yeah, you want them talking back. Yeah. I'm yelling at the TV. I, for one, like yeah. What 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 does twenty twenty two hold for a Joe Perra? What what are the goals? What are the dreams? Season three will be in the in the books by the time this year ends. What are we looking for for next year? I have an idea for a movie. I don't know if Connor's interested in making it, but it's called the, the Postcard Men. And basically, okay. it's a it's a kind of like these guys. You know, you never think about postcards, how they're made, but it's actually, they have these teams of two guys who go to towns for a week, and one guy uh, photographs or draws uh, the important scenes from the town, and then uh, there's another guy who writes, like, the phrase on the front of the postcard, uh, and so there's, like, these two people, two two guy teams, and they're, they go from town to town, and at the end of the week, they got to have a perfect postcard design. And then they move on to the next town, and that's how postcards get made. So it'd be maybe me and Connor uh, uh, being like a postcard team and uh, all the stuff that happens to us along the way. You know, maybe like, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, like we run into Michael Shannon, who's a experienced postcard guy. He's done it for 20 mm-hmm. years, and he's like, you know, he's like, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's all shit everywhere. And, uh, but then it's a, I don't know. And then we decide whether or not it is, but I don't think so. And that, you know, importance of creating a, the perfect postcard for every town, city. Uh, I, I like this postcard, man. Yeah. Tara, O'Malley, <laughs> Shannon, <laughs> postcard, man. Yeah, and then yeah, I think so it's great. Kind of, thanks. That's the rough pitch. I don't have any concrete plans to make it. But well, I'll know, tell you. I'll tell you what like, will worry me though with this postcard, man. God, postcard. God help us all if there's a minions postcard that the one postcard man finds, <laughs> he's gonna start yelling. Yeah, it just keeps on the the industry. It's just like it's that. It's just like a I don't know the. 
I don't know, like uh, the Statue of Liberty, but with minions. And the, this large <laughs> company just realized, what is it? It's not Pixar, but... Uh, yeah, I don't want to say, yeah, new. cars. If any of the cars from cars are on one of these things, yeah. that postcard ma- man is going to lose his marbles. Yeah, because it's hard to compete with a recognizable character like that. Yeah. Well, I, lo- I, lo- look, I love him. He's a sweetheart. But when it comes down <laughs> to it, Joe Perra takes the cake every every time. This guy is a juggernaut in the field of comedy. He makes me laugh. His show has is funny as can be, but also is very sweet and good natured, unlike other shows that are mining that, which again I'm not gonna name names. Um and the new season starts this Sunday. It's this Sunday. Joe Parrot yeah. talks with you on Adult Swim. Mm-hmm. Uh, every Sunday through uh, December, there's two episodes a night, and yeah, I think they'll be online. And uh, yeah, you if you Google it, I'm sure you find a way to watch whether you have cable or not. Yeah, I think it's great, and I'm proud of you, buddy. And I can't wait to check the new season out. And Thanks. I say to you, mm-hmm. keep on keeping on, Joe Para. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. I really appreciate it. Um, Honored to finally make it because we usually both are, have our thing on Tuesday nights. So this is yeah. like, like five years in the making. Because you got the show you do with what's his face, uh, the one with the bad grammar, <laughs> Dan Lacaba, who likes the one who apparently doesn't know how to spell the word the. <laughs> to be fair, it's a tricky time. word though. It's uh. Three three different letters, and and you're not even sure which one goes first, second, or third. Well, <laughs> just go well, da. He makes it da. <laughs> well, like he says, he's still in high school and working on all these comedy shows, so he's got to abbreviate where he can. Yeah, nobody on this planet wishes they were on Viva La Bam more than. <laughs> That he wishes that was the show he worked on, Dan Licata. He's like, he's as, as proud as he is of working on your show. If he could trade places yeah. and suddenly be hanging out with Ra- Rab himself or, uh, or, uh, uh Raykeon or, <laughs> or Don Vito, Brandon DiCamillo, Brand, Brand Deco, if he could hang out with Deco, what's Deco doing? We got to get Deco over on the, Deco, get on the get on the dirt bike, Deco. Dan, there has been you've heard the story about when Dan got extra inspired by Jackass when he was in high school. He broke both his legs, didn't he? Yes, yes. Was pretty, <laughs> I, I can't do the story justice, but yeah, he tried. Well, to, this is this is what we'll say, Dan Licata. Yeah. I think you're insanely funny. And I, I love you too. You want to call up and tell the story about when you got so inspired by Jackass, you jumped off a roof or something. And then, <laughs> <laughs> like, he literally was the thing that people in entertainment say doesn't happen. So, like, these things don't influence kids. And it's just like, he's literally the guy that would go into, like, the Senate, the Senate hearing being like, <laughs> it literally made me do like I had no control over myself. He he is the person that would get the whole thing shut down. Yeah. Yeah. Well We now are yeah. ruling Jackass is illegal. <laughs> well, I guess lucky for Dan, the pins in his legs were well enough and he's walking around great and the jackass guys went on to have yet another great film coming out so um, yeah everybody but i guess um well not all the jackass guys are doing okay but uh, no but look and the group you have joe you and your friends joe firestone dan lakata connor o'malley and and everybody else who works on the show, it's such a funny group. You really put together like a dream team, and it's it's so fun to watch everybody do well. 
collectively and individually. It's very exciting because you you all deserve it. It's my pleasure. I feel very lucky that um, all those guys want to work with me and uh, make the show because, you know, Connor, Joe Firestone, Dan, they all uh, deserve their own show, and I hope uh, they, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I think they'll all have one someday because they're that talented, but I feel like it's just a special moment now where we're able to all work together on the same thing, and it's, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. it feels, it's I a feel gift. very lucky. It's yeah. a gift. Um, and look, everybody, check out the new season of Joe Parra Talks with you. It's going to be on Adult Swim starting this Sunday, and also, um, our friend Mary Houlihan does artwork for it, and you can watch the first yes. two seasons on HBO Max. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Mary does excellent art, and she's got all new stuff yeah. this season. It's even better than the previous ones, so I'm excited people see that, too. Yeah, that's great. And, Joe, congratulations, and you keep doing your thing, my friend. Thanks. Congrats, Thanks, Joe. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. I appreciate it, Pat. Right. Thanks, AP Mike. And uh and you right. and Dan are at the Bell House on Tuesdays. Yes. Yeah. Yep. All right. Through the end of the year. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Joe Parra. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. Nice to see you. Take care. Good okay, take care. Good guy. Joe Parra. Good guy. I told you he's a good guy. Yeah. He's um he's someone I've known for a long time and we got back in touch. Because there is a billboard on Kent Avenue in Brooklyn that I rode my bike past that was an ad for the show. And I went I went over to take a picture of it. And I realized that they painted, um, they used like a, a security camera that's on the building, on the brick of the building. Um, they, the painters of this sign decided to paint uh, Joe's portion of his face over this security camera so this so so the nose looks like it's the security camera coming out and okay i thought that he that i was like knowing joe's sense of humor i'm like oh hey they must he must have said like if there's an obstruction please use it you know it would be mm-hmm. funny like i'm like thinking that this is joe's sense of humor and so i i, I shot a video of it and i posted it on instagram and uh and that got us back in touch because he responded to it. he's like yeah i had no idea that, that they did that but i'm glad you pointed it out because it's ridiculous and hilarious um and then because we're, we did a show on a wednesday they're usually busy uh doing their show on tuesdays in fact, mm-hmm. i've only ever been, been able to go to it once uh but it's a great show um no it's it's i never get to see it but every i wish i could but look everybody what you can see is the show they do each and every uh tuesday you can check that out on your own yeah, but but yeah. the Adult Swim show but, is a real triumph. It's a it's a you absolutely you said it best, Tom. It's a great show. No, that was amazing to have. So yes, thank you, thank you, Joe, for checking in. 